I've been asked countless number of times about the impetus that made me take on this mammoth task and well there's a long and a short answer to it and the short answer is just that I was really sick of academic life With Academy my initial aim was to establish a publication that would be able to provide a thoughtful print antidote to the dizzying fast-paced news cycle one that would engage with um or rather even make central aspects of public discourse which were newsworthy but treat them reflectively and slowly a publication of social political and cultural inquiry one that would help us make sense of our many histories provide some necessary context to our varied experiences of the present and the challenges that lie in achieving a kind of equal democratic future and i'd like to believe that with every passing day we achieve one new milestone towards these foundational goals that being said was still a very very young publication we're a very small team um and one of the biggest challenges that we're facing right now is figuring out how to lend our platform to voices that are often marginalized in the mainstream press in India Soon after we joined Twitter someone tagged Academy in this thread on um the top 2 ideas that you wish you came up with and it's not before that point that it thought that this was like some unique phenomena that we had stumbled upon it was just a political online magazine with pretty pictures and a lot of colors and but i i now when i think of it i guess um it is unique for the geographical political social and cultural context that it operates in um so well the publication has proved that even with a tiny operational budget it's possible to garner substantial online readership and cultural significance that in a very very short period of time i feel like we were able to achieve this because we paired incisive thoughtful enduring writing with rigorous editorial practices and um, mature and bold design visuals serve a very clear goal for academy a it's to capture the readers attention on instagram or on web sort of invite them into reading and hope that the writing hooks them into completing the entire article um so when charu and i work together to figure out the cover it is always this question of um like while keeping this goal in mind is always this question that should it be like a subtle invitation or should it be like visual clickbait but Yeah, I mean it's always that balance and whenever we design anything for academy it's always this uh balance that we try to strike between having a cover that instantly and clearly communicates but at the same time handles the subject matter deftly and in a responsible manner basically. Basically with the requisite amount of nuance both written or visual can deter trolls who are operating on binary concepts and seeking targets that fall within them. Yes, true, we still get some hate, but compared to other like-minded publications in India, we could say that we've been comparatively unscathed. 
we've been very careful to ensure that the visual depictions aren't literal or sensationalist, but rather to make a visual point with the design that complements the writing. So those who want to hate, don't go beyond the first side. To the unsuspecting viewer, it might seem like we parlayed our Instagram wins um, into a full-on publication, but it's actually the other way around. Um, and we were quite ironically never interested in the cyber hustle. It's it's not until like a month and a half or two back that we first launched our website, and we weren't even sure of of what an online publishing platform outside Instagram would achieve. But yeah, like coming back to Instagram as a publishing platform, um, if anything, I feel like the Instagram page was kind of a window so that other people could connect with what Academy aimed to be as an independent publishing platform. And this was all while we were still trying to find our step. But then it grew, kept growing, and it grew into a modestly popular activist, explainer platform in its own right, even without a print magazine in the works. I feel like a lot of our idiosyncratic and bold, uh, playful, creative direction is a direct result of us designing exclusively for Instagram. At Which leads us to Academy's design mantra, no style is the best style. This gives me and the editorial team enough freedom to explore as many ways of visually interpreting the writing. In short, in our case, I do a unique packaging design for every single article. Since starting Academy, this project has really pushed me into a lot of different territories. I would love to work exclusively for Academy, but money is tight and we pay all contributors out of our pocket. So I take solace in the sheer breadth of skills I've had to teach myself in the process and all the imaginative, critical and unconventional stories we publish. That through my design skills, I've helped in creating a home for them in Academy. I know that this is a type event, but I really just want to use this opportunity to talk about texture, which has become a core tool that I rely on when I design covers for Academy. While I mainly use it as a stylistic element, adding another dimension to what are currently digital-only artworks, it also creates an interesting contrast. Since most of our viewership accesses the published material via mobile devices, crafty use of textures lends the visual effect of tactility. This is why we wanted to start a print magazine. Tactility, the touch, the feel, and the look of the material objects is extremely interesting to me as a designer. By texture, I don't mean a layer with overlay blending mode in Photoshop, but how being sensitive to textures can manifest itself as a design choice throughout, like in the way you can combine mediums. I've used pencils, inks, crayons, and cut paper for covers for Academy. Here is a recent piece where I wrote the title with soft pastels. This was for a translation and transcript of a video recorded by an activist right before he was jailed by the Indian government. I wanted the type to be suggestive of how urgent this monologue was, like a note scribbled very hurriedly. The original video is in Hindi, and so we wanted this transcript to reach as many non-Hindi speakers as we could through our platform. For this piece, the audacity to ask questions, Nishant Kantia wrote about an incident in Northeast Delhi where three journalists were attacked by a mob while they inquired why a lot of saffron flags, a symbol of the majority Hindu religion, had been placed in front of a mosque. This area saw the worst of the Delhi violence that happened earlier this year, and there has been heightened tensions between Hindus and Muslims. This topic was a very sensitive one and a personal one as well, because the people attacked used to be Charu's co-workers. We wanted to approach the topic through one motif, that of the flags, since that was at the center of the incident, but in an oblique and restrained manner. If you see our initial variations, the flag cutouts seemed too fake. There wasn't anything interesting about them, yet I felt the idea had some merit. That's when I decided to cut out paper flags, photograph them, arrange them in Photoshop and integrate the typography with it. The little frayed edges of the paper flags bounce on the surface, the uneven shadows, the light reflecting off the paper, all these little details captured a human aspect which a digital-only approach simply cannot emulate. I went for oversized type, a play on the word audacity, but at the same time keeping the overall tone serious. The final output was close to what I had in mind, but made much more impactful because of the choice of the medium. While meeting deadlines is super important, 
that's why a lot of my workflow relies on adjustment layers non destructive workflows out of masks as well as making a lot of variations not deleting anything at all never delete anything storage is cheap you never know what when you need anything having that option to test ideas um really fast allows for like better work to happen under like tight um constraints and at like most times there's so many moving parts we started with like a team of two it was just our man and me for almost like 7 to 8 months and now um we are almost a team of 20 um and most of us are volunteers and most times we have multiple stories in the works at all times but often it's a really really quick turn around like our man said we know it a news organization we publish commentary opinion personal essays largely but yeah most of them still have to in some way or the other respond to what's newsworthy so it's important to be mindful of of those tight deadlines and um at least attempt to uh keep up with the news cycle i actually didn't know this world of design and illustration existed until char who showed me all these publications in my first year in new york it obviously blew my mind in my second year i had the pleasure to attend classes taught by gil anderson pablo delcan ben denzer and john newman i'm very thankful to have their unending support for this project especially ben denzer he took a very keen interest in academy and said that this was a very fresh approach to politics and design hello i'm akash and i'm the photo editor at academy magazine Our approach at Academy has been one that emphasizes on working with our contributors rather than looking at their work in isolation. From the piece that we published on the anniversary of the revocation of the special status of occupied Kashmir with photographer Masrat Zara, we look at the editorial elements of text design and photography in conjunction such that these elements and the processes behind it remain in constant conversation. As a photo editor, perspective and context are integral components towards approaching photography at Academy. Love Pavemented is Academy Magazine's bi-monthly newsletter focusing on progressive politics, philosophy, and internet culture. We offer deep dives into issues, share weird and wonderful excerpts from history, offer free resources and gems from the internet that we love, and more. Our past editions have covered Black Lives Matter, the crises in Yemen and Beirut, cancel culture, digital silencing, fake news, and uh, so much more. Um, the newsletter has a few defining aspects. Firstly, there is a strong visual design element, and a lot of thought goes into the aesthetics that manage to speak to all eight thousand of our readers and represent the theme in a compelling yet sensitive manner. Secondly, um, the newsletter relies on research and a strong narrative and expert opinions, and we have an exclusive blurb, for example, by an expert for our readers every edition. Lastly, and most importantly, I think um, the Love Pavemented newsletter embodies Academy Magazine's spirit of social justice, progressiveness, championing the truth, and really allowing the reader to think critically along with us uh, using research and design. Hi, I'm Sky Arunati Thomas, and I'm one of the editors over at Academy Mag. At Academy Mag, our editorial and also design policy is first and foremost to create a supportive, um, nourishing, and encouraging environment for our contributors, whether they're writers, photographers, artists, illustrators. Um, from an editorial point of view, we 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 create an atmosphere in which um, the writer can go as far as they want to go with their argument, with their ideas. um we, we don't want them to to feel reserved or shy from critique um or nuance which is very important to us during this uh, extremely binary stake and polarized contemporary political moment design plays such a pivotal role within that structure of care um because each piece receives individual attention and an individual unique visual identity um also furthering its argument its position its vulnerabilities 
And um, we're also working with the kind of short attention economy created by um, the social media landscape. And so having a strong visual identity certainly allows for our pieces to have a broader reach and also um, have a much more engaged audience. Um, we're also working during a time when intelligent media landscape and so having a strong visual identity certainly allows for our pieces to have a broader reach and also um, have a much more engaged audience. Um, we're also working during a time when intelligent algorithms are trying to you know take things down or um, censor certain points of view and so by taking a very playful um, but also again rigorous approach to the design identity of each piece where we're able to develop a level of visual sophistication that um, hopefully isn't that easy to um, either predict or track um, so yes we take what we do very seriously and we have some big plans for the days and years to come so um, thank you for your support and um, please read us